Well, hello everybody. Welcome to the last calendar that I am going to make that is double digit. This is my last double digit calendar because next month for November it's going to be my hundredth calendar so there's not going to be any more double digits after this. So hopefully you enjoy the double digits because this is the very end and so yeah um, this is calendar 99. So with calendar 99 I might as well introduce my 99th calendar theme and that is Coraline. Now, Coraline. Okay, so, maybe you've heard of Coraline. Maybe you haven't. Well, this movie came out in 2009, I hope, because if I di it didn't, then I am wrong, and then you can laugh at me. Um, it could have came out in 2010, but I think it was 2009. I actually sort of remember this movie coming out, but I had no idea what it was about, I guess. Um, I think I knew about her crossing into the trap door or the small door in her house and heading over but I didn't know much about Coraline so um you know it was a scary looking movie so it was a while before I actually decided to watch it and let's just say that I didn't watch this movie for many many years I guess I just sort of forgot about it and then on my recommended YouTube feed it kept showing movies by this guy named, or the series by a guy named The Theorizer about Coraline. And so, you know, I mean, it just brought Coraline back to my memory. But it didn't determine me to see it, because I, I wasn't going to watch those series until I saw the movies, because I don't want it spoiled. And then I wasn't going to, um, and still, I wasn't going to... I didn't necessarily plan on seeing Coraline, but it did bring my interest back up. It, like, made me look at Coraline and go, like, hmm, I wonder what that's about. And so, maybe I was starting to think about it a little bit. And I think I did watch some Theorizer video, and he was always talking about how he did these Coraline series and stuff. Um, but yeah. Um, so, I was watching that, but I was like, I'm not sure, maybe I'll watch Coraline. And then... I went to the theater to see Finding Dory. Yep, you remember Finding Dory, right? Well, apparently there's a movie coming out called Kubo and the Two Strings. Um, which, I'm gonna turn on my fan. It's a little warm in here. And, yeah. There, I turned on my fan. Um, so, yeah, very professional of me to have planned that out beforehand. I have a blanket over me anyway, so that's a little weird. I always wear blankets and have fans on at the same time. I don't know why. I guess it's trying to find a good balance between warm and cool. But, back to Coraline. So, then there's a preview for Kubo and the Two String. And I quickly learned that that was from the studio that brought you Coraline. Well, I think that was it. I was like, hmm... Kubo looks interesting, mostly because I'm into Japanese stories because of, um, let's see, hopefully this isn't a spoiler one. Swords of Power. Um, hmm. Oh yeah, that probably was... Uh, yeah, it was very quick. So, Swords of Power made me interested in Japanese stuff. And so Kubo was coming out, and so I was like, that's from the, theory, the studio that brought you Coraline. And so that's when I decided I would finally watch Coraline. Now, Coraline is a very interesting movie. It's about a girl. Um, she goes through a trap door in her mother's, or her new home, and she ends up meeting her other mother and her other father who want her to move in with them. And, you know, and so it's a pretty spooky movie. And, you know, I liked it quite a bit, and so I recommended it to my mom. Um, this is actually, if I remember right, the first stop motion calendar I've done. Um, yeah, because I don't think I've done, well, I shouldn't say those, because then you'll expect me to do them, if anybody even watches these, but <clears throat> I don't think I've done any stop motion otherwise, um, other than this. And so, Coraline is actually really well done with the stop motion and everything. Um, so, you know, and it has a good story. And, you know, it brings out, you know, I actually, 
do know somebody who tragically, I don't think, would hesitate to so spoiler, um, so buttons into their eyes for other mother if they found her because she sort of did give up everything for another somebody that sort of is similar to other mother and that's just sad. But unfortunately, yes, I know somebody who sort of did have an other mother experience, but this one didn't come. Well, she's still alive. She didn't go like Coraline. Um, but you know, it was really sad. I guess, yeah, it is. Um, because we were really close and everything, and then, you know, this other mother figure came by, and yeah. Mm. She didn't fight back like Coraline did. So, yeah, um, Coraline was an interesting movie, and I sent it to, um, I put it on hold for my mom and my family, and they actually liked it too. My sister thought it was too bright of colors, it had too bright of colors for the kind of movie it was portraying, and maybe it is, it's sort of a spooky movie. And I read the book, but I like the movie a lot better than the book, just because it flows better. The book just, like, has everything in the other world at once. Well, the movie sort of splits it up. You know, if you go then, comes out. Usually, it's the other way around between books and movies. And books have, um, the books have things spread out, and then the movie combines it all together. But Coraline, it was the other way. Um, you know, all at once, and then the movie split it up. Um, it sort of builds a different character and contrast, you know, between the two places. It just establishes a bit of a contrast, and it's sort of interesting. Um, yeah, I usually don't read books after, or read books after I've watched a movie of them, unless they never make the sequel to the books, um, into a movie, and so, um, yeah, by the way, Coraline is supposed to not ever have a sequel is what I read. Um, but yeah, Coraline. Um, it's interesting. And it's stop motion, which my brother loves. Yeah, that's why I put it on hold for my mom, I think. Because my brother does stop motion, and you can see that some of that. And or my other channel, Everest Canyon, which is actually my main channel. Believe it or not. So yeah, Everest Canyon. Um, so, my brother actually, um, does stop motion, and I thought it would be good for him, I guess. And I think he would work really good at Leica. Um, you've heard him voice in these calendars before. But yeah, Coraline. Um, so, yeah, what should I say? Okay, so, the design, um, oh yeah. So why did I do this for October 2017? Obviously, it's Halloween-style calendar. It's like... Okay, so I want to clarify that this, unfortunately, you know, does not take place in October. It takes place in February. Now, how do I know that? You know, Coraline is at the clothing store wanting some mittens, and then there's a sign-up that says President's Day Sale. So it takes place in February, and so I was considering doing this for February, but then I decided to do Doctor Strange for my mom. And my mom insisted that I do this one for October instead, because she liked Coraline. And so I decided, maybe I'll just wait for October, and if I have an opening that I feel like doing, maybe I'll do Coraline. And so I did do Coraline for, the, for October, and this is my October calendar for Coraline. Because, you know, that's just... So, October 2017. Now, that is why I chose it, because it sort of fits the Halloween theme, and this is the month of Halloween. Okay, so let's start with... I'll just start with the text. Now, up here is the month. And what I did, interestingly enough, is I wanted these buttons. It doesn't look as well close up. It doesn't look that good close up and why did I say well? I don't know. Um, but you know, um, we get all these buttons. Um, but what are these buttons? I wanted the O's to be buttons and so, hmm, this is not, how many layers? back of this. Okay, I will basically show what this is. You will not believe it, maybe, but if I uncrop it, then here's what we got. It's actually the O from the Coraline text. 
healthy. Um, if you can see that, we probably can. Um, but, yeah. That's what it's from. From the text. And I am going to... Yeah, but I it wasn't that color originally. It was, um, you know... Yeah. It wasn't that color originally, but I changed it, and it thinks this is spelt wrong because I had to delete all the O's to fit that in there. Um, because I just did. And so there's no O's if you look at this text. So, um, as it really is. The buttons are the O's, and there's nothing there. Um, so yeah. Now, the color scheme was almost too simple. I felt sort of lazy, and I almost didn't want... I mean, I almost felt like it was too simple, and it made me feel a little lazy. Now, what I did was up here, I did blue and purple down here. I was also considering briefly doing it the other way, but I think this was always the way I intended to do it. Um, so yeah. Um, but... After I realized, I was like, what could I do to make this just a little bit more intense? So, what I did was, I had the gradient, um, but it was more of the simple gradient. Um, so, yes, I'm undoing a lot of this stuff. It was less contrast, but then I decided to increase the contrast. And so, yeah, that was what I did. Now, I also did the same thing with the purple boxes down here, um, which I did that. Then I decided there's something that I wanted to do also. It was like while I was walking home from the library yesterday after having returned the DVD. Um, <clears throat> so what I did, yeah, because I don't own it, but I did order Land Before Time. So, yep, I'm getting Land Before Time, I believe. Mm-hmm. Last month theme. Um, but what I did was I went over to GIMP, as you'll see in my last Land Before Time calendar. I sort of have been using GIMP now. Um, I don't know if that's... I don't know how much I'm going to do that. Depends on a calendar-by-calendar -calendar basis. GIMP seemed right for this one, too. Um, so what I did was I used the option Weave. Okay, so what Weave does... Well, it made them more ribbony, um, but... And I had to increase the brightness of the layer because it made it look darker than I wanted. But what I did was just use the weave option. Um, it was similar to the one that I used for this one last time. So it wasn't really very different. I had to adjust settings because these look too big and they look like ribbons. I wanted them to look like yarn and still looks like ribbons close up sort of. <sighs> But, you know, like yarn because of the sewing, the doll, and everything at the beginning, and, you know, just that sort of stuff. The scaled down clothing that they have to make for stop motion. I don't know, it just seemed like a good idea. Because of the doll, mostly. Um, so yeah, I decided to make that look that, and, um, um, what's happening? My mom or somebody texted me, and... You're gonna hear an awesome text, maybe. What does the text say? Oh wait, this is not. Oh, um, it won't. The oven won't be available in a few hours. That's what the house manager says. Um. Oh man, now I have to go back to the 99 cent store after this to get non-microwave. I mean, non-oven food. Cause that's all I did. That's. Well, maybe the stovetop's still open. And I can make hamburgers. And I'm having a food crisis right now while I'm doing a calendar video. That's just perfect. Um, but yeah. Um, these were supposed to be yarns. And so I did yarn. Ish. And yeah. Um, I had to scale down the side of the yarn. And it looks like something from far off. Well, it could look like yarn. It's just... Too flat, and my mom's calling now. So yes. Yeah. Hi, momgy. Hi, Kirky. You're about to voice in another calendar video. I am. Yep. <laughs> because. 
My brother's on the phone. Hopefully you can hear him. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you like that, don't you? I don't know what Coraline. Oh, it's the only fun for you. Yep, and uh, Huh? What were you saying? Um, so I just explained to the audience who's probably not gonna watch this that, um, how I did these text box. It was just a simple gimp trip trick. It was like weave or whatever. Um, you know. It was a simple gimp trick. I used weave. Okay, and so, now what you'll see here, um, other than those, is what I wanted to be a sort of moon. Okay, so I was going to create a moon, because that seemed like a central thing to Coraline in a way. But then I decided to turn the moon into a button. So what I did was, I just, um, after creating the moon, I created these extra dots that were the same color as the background, relatively. Um, yeah. What, Kirky? Why? What happened? Wait, Oh, well, do you want to continue this calendar video, or do you want to go? Do you want to be part of this calendar video still, which you can't see, or do you want to go? <laughs> okay, so, um, so yeah. This is a calendar video, Miranda. You're... You can be heard in the calendar video, Miranda, pro probably. And so this is a moon I created, which, um, as you can see, these, um, don't match up exactly, but they're harder to see, and I've already spent a lot of time talking to my brother and stuff, and checking a text message that the oven's not available. So, um, yeah. Um, so, I should go on to the pictures, I guess. Okay, so what I did with the picture is, I sort of, well, it was hard to find room because I started up here, but then I decided that they would sort of go down in a sort of, like, funnel-like fashion, um, so you can see that, but it seemed like the space up here was empty, and it just didn't feel right, so I decided the central picture, I would sort of change, I would make it sort of, what's that? It was like this. But I decided to make it look intentional, and that's the camera in the background, isn't it? Um, yeah, so I decided to make it look very intentional by, um, you know, just having um, this sort of angled out towards the center. And so, yeah, made it look like it was intentional, that, which it was in a way, but it was mostly an accident. But when you make accidents, you have to make them look intentional. Um, so here we have, at the center picture, we have, um, just a poster. It's Coraline, an adventure too weird for words. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't see that. Um, but yeah, here's Coraline. Here's the ghost. Um, there's the house. Um, one is daytime, one is nighttime. And there is a cat, which I've decided to call a Reaper. You know who a Reaper is? Reaper the cat from the school for good and evil. And oh, I'm sorry, mom. So the cat is named Reaper, but it, the cat in um school for good and evil is actually pretty bald. Um, but you know, I just on the back of the book, I think it says that Agatha owned a black cat, so I sort of imagined Reaper the whole time, or. I sort of imagine the cat from Coraline to be what Reaper looked like. And so, yeah. Um, so, yeah. And then here we have, um, another picture. Here is Coraline being introduced at her new home with her other mother and other father. Now, these are very nice people, you know? They give her a cake that says, welcome home. And, you know, just that kind of stuff. Okay, here is a point where Coraline's convinced. What's that? What is that? 
I don't know. Um, so, here, you, you're replaying me talking? Are you replaying my own talking? Oh. Well, here's Coraline after she, after she lost the Seeker thing that she was given by the people who live downstairs. Oh, I forgot their names. But yeah, she lost the sort of Seeker thing. Um, so she wasn't able to continue the mission, and she thought she lost. Now, this is a sad expression on her face, but Coraline doesn't feel very photogenic when she's crying for some reason. I don't know why. Do you think so, Kirky? He went silent. Um, so here is Coraline battling her other father. Her other father actually doesn't seem like a bad guy. Um, quite like other mother, which hopefully you learned the spoiler warning before here, and you like... Yeah, her other father just doesn't seem bad. Kirky? I'm gonna... I should probably go now, because this is hard to do while you're talking on the phone. And I'm already up to 21 minutes and 23 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Coraline's other father is battling her, but she, he doesn't want to hurt her. He's not that bad of a guy. He just m wanted to make up a song about Coraline, how she's a friend, that she's a pal, whatever of his. Something like that. And so here is... Um, after she got all the pieces, um, the whole house and everything has turned white. The whole outside world has turned white, and everything is flying apart. That The only thing that will exist is the inside of the house. Now, she has finally got inside, and she's trying to trick other mother into letting her free, so she t tells her about the trap door. Well, she goes for the snow globe. And so... Reaper should be up there somewhere, but he's not very visible. And yes, I'm going by the name Reaper. And here is a very sad scene. This is, you know, ghosts are usually meant to be scary in movies, but the ghosts themselves aren't that scary in Coraline. They're more sad, and they bring out the scariness of the other mother, but they're still very sad. You know, they don't, the ghosts themselves don't scare you, they make you scared of the other mother even more if you're scared of that. They're just a sad story about people who are just like Coraline who wanted, um, who wanted to go and have, you know, other mother. They wanted, they didn't like their own parents. Just like that person I know who, you better not mention their name, Kurt D. Your side. You better not mention the name of the person because I'm not going to edit it out. And who had an other mother experience and didn't succeed like Coraline. And here is Coraline in her new bedroom before everything goes bad. And she thinks it looks like a really nice bedroom. So yeah. And here is Coraline right at the beginning of the movie as she goes through the trap door. Well, it's not right at the beginning, but I decided to keep it... Um, this is probably the earliest scene in the calendar because I thought it would look, you know, like... There just wasn't much to tell before she went through the trap door as far as picture-wise in the pictures. I mean, yes, there's establishing for the movie and it's really good for a movie, but as far as, like, the... Just uh, calendar-wise goes, it's not the best. To, there weren't any pictures really to put before she went through the trap door. And here is Coraline talking to Reaper, who has portaled his head through the tree trunk. And the tree actually splits on the path. And the cat is on both sides of the path um, at the same time through the tree trunk. I don't know if this exactly works all the way, because... I don't know. But it's okay. And then here is Coraline and Reaper, which I named the cat, if I have to remind you. I'm walking through the, um, the world after it has started disintegrating, because, you know, um, she only, the other mother only created what she thought would impress Coraline. And so, yeah. And then here is Coraline. She had come back to rescue her parents, and 
The other mother is going to close the trap door and her other father has put her down. And then here is an interesting epic scene starter where, um, where Coraline's called a cheating little girl or something. And what happens is other mother had disintegrated the floor and turned it into a spider web. Yep. So, I tried to add the actual spider web clip into the video, but, um... But that was just too bright for the calendar and just did not work as far as color scheme in it. Yeah, it did not work at all with the calendar's colors. Um, so let's go to the dates. On the first of the month, which is tomorrow as I'm recording this, Halloween Scary Video 2 on YouTube! Tomorrow! Which, I might not release this calendar until the day after tomorrow on the second because you know, I don't know how long it'll take to upload Halloween Scary Video 2. So on the- and it's also Daylight Savings. Are you excited? No. Are you excited for tomorrow? No. You! Why? Because Halloween Scary Video 2 is on YouTube tomorrow. Sounds fun for you. But Miranda's listening to me recording a calendar, too. Okay, and on the second is doctor's appointment. Woo! Yes, I have a doctor's appointment. And so, yeah. Monday. And then on the third, Pirates of the Caribbean 5 on DVD. Are you excited, Kirky? Yeah, Blu-ray, but I put DVD because I never get Blu-ray stuff because I would never be able to afford a Blu-ray player. So, on DVD is Pirates of the Caribbean 5! Yeah! And so, I don't know. Um, I'm like... I don't remember what position I am on the hold queue, but I'm not that late in. I should be about among the first group to get it. And then here... On the 4th is a holiday called World Animal Day. Hmm. Interesting. And I put your boinky just to emphasize it. You like your boinky, right? Kirky? Okay, so it's World Jaboinky Day. And Miranda's laughing, isn't she? No. And here on the 6th. It's My Little Pony is in theater. There's a My Little Pony movie coming to theaters on the 6th. Are you looking forward to it? Kirky? Why? Because, are you... Why are you silent every time I ask you a question? Right away. Mm-hmm. Are you doing your little ritual before you say anything? What's wrong? Are you doing a ritual before you answer? Uh-uh. Oh. Oh, I know. Go tomorrow. But yeah, my little... Oh. Is it still gonna be there next week? What? The Eagles. Okay, so on the 6th, next Friday, My Little Pony is in theater, so... I'm gonna not see that in theaters, but I'm gonna see it on DVD probably, just cause who knows. Um, so yeah, I decided to put it on my calendar, might as well. <laughs> but yeah, it's not something I'm gonna see in theaters. Um, I guess there are guys who like My Little Pony, guys my age, um, but yeah, I don't think that's me. I mean, I haven't seen much My Little Pony except when I was really little and my sister would watch My Little Pony, and so I did too, and I was young. And so on the 10th, Alex Ryder Book 10 is in stores. Um, so yeah, uh, this might be something worth reading, I don't know. Like they said, Alex Ryder 9 was the last book, but then they said Shrek 4 was the last movie, and, well, maybe they'll do something with that. And on the 13th, there's a movie called Goodbye, Christopher Robin in theaters, but this does not have to do with the Disney live-action um, Christopher Robin movie. Um, this is totally different. This is about Christopher Robin, you know, the, how the books of Winnie the Pooh were inspired. Um, which I read something about, and he actually didn't like Winnie the Pooh anymore after he grew up because he didn't like the fame or something. 
sort of sad. And then on the 17th, Spider-Man Homecoming on DVD. Hmm. Wait, what was that? Okay. Yeah, I actually put that on um, hold. Yeah, it's on DVD. I put it on hold at the library, so it was actually very early enough, so... Um, it might be the only Marvel Cinematic Universe film that I probably will not buy until I watch it for a while. I mean, it's I hadn't seen that one in theater, so, um, and so I don't know if it's any good or not. I don't really like remakes, and I don't think this one is intentionally a remake, but it was a remake by consequence. And so, I just don't want feel like watching another remake of Spider-Man or buying one until I figure out if it's any good, so I'm going to be among the first group to get out of the library also. Or in the first group. I'm going to be in the first group to get Spider-Man Homecoming at the library, and after I watch it, I can decide where I want to go from it. And then on the 18th is a very interesting day. National Sew Buttons Into Your Eyes Day. This is a holiday I made up just for Coraline. Yep, it's not a real holiday. But it sounded cool. So, yeah. And I added these cool, um, you know, buttons here and the sewing needle. So, yeah, it's National Sew Buttons Into Your Eye Day. And on the 19th, a colorful silent film is on YouTube. I spelled it color as in O-U-R because, um, that was just, um, that's sort of English, right? Well, I thought it looked fancy. And so, this is the film, the first film I did for my... Cinema 2 class, and it's not a very great film because they just wanted us to do certain shots, but it's interesting still. I'm enough. I'm going to release it. And then on the 20th, a movie called Geostorm is in theaters. Geostorm? I guess it's about, you know, the government having learned to control weather, and then now for some reason there are all these disasters. And they gotta kidnap the president like a national treasure. I thought it would just be a regular disaster film. It's a little different than I thought after watching the preview. It's not just a disaster. There's like a unique twist, I guess, controlling weather. Like in Pajama Sam 2. Or something. And then on the 24th, War for the Planet of the Apes and the Emoji Movie are on DVD. <coughs> are you excited? Because War for the Planet of the Apes and the Emoji Movie are on DVD. Yeah, so get excited for those if you are. And that would be interesting. And then here we have on this 27th Super Mario Odyssey in stores on a system I'll probably never own. Because I don't have enough money. And I decided to emphasize my pity party here on the calendar. So yeah, um, but I decided to put it here for you guys who are interested, which is probably nobody because I don't get many watches, but here on the thir 31st, Halloween, and instead of putting the star like I normally put, I actually decided to put a button that I decided to make the color of what I would have used for a star almost, and it looks more like a moon, like the moon that I added at the top. And the Dark Tower is on DVD. But yeah, I didn't put a star this time because I put a button to mark it as a holiday. Just for Halloween. And for some reason I didn't put on the first or the second. I didn't change the text font color because I was forgetting. And so yeah, there's no separate text font color for those to sort of emphasize they're not the same month. But last month's theme was The Land Before Time. Now if you like Land Before Time, I recommend you check this calendar out. Um, so yeah, that might be interesting. Because it's land before time. And now comes the time for next month's theme. Guess what next month's theme is? Turkey? Uh -huh. Guess what next month's theme is? I don't know. Make a guess. It's my hundredth calendar. What's my option? Wally 2. Wally 2 does not exist. Uh, something fun. Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Well, I'm gonna reveal my calendar for next month 
And next month's theme is Marvel Studios The Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. So, that is my next month's theme. This is my this month's theme. And Land Before Time was our last month's theme. So I hope you enjoyed my October 2017 Coraline calendar. Thanks for watching, and bye!